Welcome to Geography 485 585L Internet Mapping, Module 2.3, Web Based Mapping Clients, The Open Layers JavaScript Framework, Part 1. In this presentation, I will be providing uh, a rapid overview of the basic capabilities of, of the Open Layers JavaScript Framework. Um, highlighting um, some of the differentiating characteristics between the Open Layers framework and the Google Maps API. And then we'll discuss the Open Layers um, uh, model for developing web pages through a quick illustration of what a simple Open Layers uh, client interface HTML page would look like, um, and noting the similarities between that and a web page that is based upon the Google Maps API in terms of the conceptual model for the structure of the HTML and JavaScript. During this week's lab session, I will then demonstrate a set of Open Layers client interfaces demonstrating a number of the capabilities of the Open Layers JavaScript framework um, in an interactive manner with links to those demonstrations provided um, on the last slide of this presentation. When we're talking about the capabilities of open layers, um, it is actually a very uh, powerful general purpose JavaScript framework for developing web-based interactive mapping applications. And those capabilities include a variety of of uh, resources and abilities that go beyond what we've uh, seen thus far in our work with the Google Maps API. Um, in particular, um, one area w in the open layers capabilities that is different is that with open layers, you can actually choose from multiple base maps. Um, you can actually use Google, um, Yahoo, Bing, or OpenStreetMap um, as a base map provided by another provider, or you could even uh, provide your own base maps based on um, any number of other servers or services that you might be using to publish your own data to use as a base map for your own application. Um, given that, uh, Open Layers does provide a model for interacting with multiple map server platforms. And it's this flexibility that gives you the possibility of hosting your own base maps or other map layers using a wide variety of server platforms, um, including the GeoServer platform that we will be working with later um, in the semester for publishing your own data. Some of the uh, more notable platforms to, uh, that, that you can potentially uh, connect to using open layers including include um, ArcGIS, um, both REST-based and cache servers, um, though support for this uh, continues to evolve as uh, ESRI um, continues to release new versions of their um, access models, which then the developers of other applications need to revise their software to keep up with. Um, there is service for legacy Arc IMS uh, services as well. The Comapp uh, platform and also Map Server platform are among the other um, essentially Map Server platforms that Open Layers can interact with. Beyond specific Map Server platforms, each of which potentially have their own specific APIs or application programming interfaces. One of the most useful characteristics of open layers is its support for a variety of key open geospatial consortium standards, including standards that we've uh, previously discussed, the web map service, web feature services, and also the GML uh, format for the representation of vector uh, data and their associated attributes, and the KML standard. Um, other standards that we haven't discussed but that are also supported include the Web Map Tile Service, or WMTS, a standard uh, used by some platforms for providing essentially predefined tile-based mapping visualization capabilities, 
and styled layer descriptors, SLD, as a way to uh, specify to a server that you're interacting with the, um, the definition of how you would like a particular um, map image rendered as it's delivered to you through a WMS client and actually through other OGC services as well. But one of the common uses is through uh, interactions with a web map server. This allows an open layers client to essentially connect with any service that is publishing using these OGC standards. Open Layers also provides a wide variety of control types as a part of the user interface. These are controls that you have um, quite a bit of flexibility in the configuration of and the, um, the customization of. And those include basic navigation uh, tools in terms of how you can um, pan and zoom uh, the, the map extent um, there is an optional overview, essentially providing an inset for an overview map showing the location of the current map view on a larger reference map. Information about the current map scale um, that may be presented either um, numerically or actually as a scale bar, again, that can be customized. Uh, tools for being able to create and edit features and actually send those to a uh, remote client and uh, update remote systems or actually uh, create new data sets. Um, a graphical option for adding an overlay representing um, a geographic or other grid. And also a control for being able to select the layers that are visible as a part of the map. These are all um, essentially uh, available control types that you can use to provide um, an inter uh, interface that is uh, more powerful and flexible than having to potentially write your own controls in JavaScript as you might have to do with some other mapping platforms. Open Layers also um, supports the development of specifically uh, styled custom features that you can link attributes to within the interface. And through that, it actually supports a wide variety of geometry types, including those that are listed here in terms of curves, linear rings, line strings, multiple line strings, multipoints, multipolygons, and points, polygons, and rectangles. These are all uh, feature types that you can define within the interface or that you can define programmatically that can also then be rendered within the map interface. In addition to essentially having access to these feature primitives that you can define in terms of these specific geometry types, Open Layers also has direct support for many different data formats that it can both read in terms of retrieving those data from a remote server and being able to integrate them into the interface, um, but also being able to write in some cases so that you can, um, on the client side, essentially within the web browser, generate uh, data and make it available for the user to download or otherwise interact with or write those data and, um, and send them back to a server uh, as a part of a larger um, application. The final uh, major characteristic of the Open Layers JavaScript framework is that it's open source, meaning that the source code behind the framework is available for developers to download and freely integrate into their applications or their software um, development environments. One example of that is the GeoExt uh, JavaScript framework, which is basically built um, on top of a combination of the Open Layers JavaScript framework and the Ext or EXT JavaScript framework, providing an, an additional set of tools for streamlining the development of web-based applications that in this case also have geospatial capabilities. This open source character for open layers allows that sort of uh, continued evolution and integration of the capabilities of open layers into other systems. 
uh, basically providing a, a broader impact and availability for the capabilities across different systems. When we think about open layers uh, in contrast to Google Maps, there are, some, there are several distinguishing characteristics that it's worth keeping in mind as you consider the use of one or the other in the development of your interactive internet mapping applications. Probably one of the most significant ones is in open layers, a greater emphasis on client-side processing. Essentially, having um, the capabilities within the web browser itself for doing more of the work that in Google Maps is taken care of by, the Goog by Google servers and then with the products of that processing then being delivered through the Google Maps API. The KML integration model is a good example of that and that both open layers and Google Maps support the use of KML files for adding data to a map that is available through a web client, but their strategies for essentially accessing and delivering those KM files are, KML files are very different. For in Google Maps, when you load a KML layer into a map in a Google Map application, what you're doing is you're basically telling Google servers to retrieve that KML file and process it and integrate it as an additional, essentially visual overlay on top of the other uh, map tiles that are being delivered by Google Maps. This allows Google to cache and process the map images that represent that KML file while delivering essentially the pictures of the KML uh, data represented um, through the Google Maps interface uh, transparently to the user. This is in contrast to the open layers KML integration approach where open layers um, actually uh, retrieves the KML file into the web browser itself and does the processing of the KML file within the web browser. As you might expect, this requires additional processing and computational power um, from the web browser to be able to uh, handle and process that KML file, but it also provides some additional options for interacting with that KML file once it is loaded into the memory in the browser. So this is one of those instances where there are pros and cons to both approaches, where um, on, the, on the Google Maps side of things, the fact that Google's computer infrastructure is essentially caching and delivering the visualization of the KML files ultimately provides um, a lighter weight capability that uh, allows those maps to potentially be used on um, less uh, powerful computational platforms um, or in um, more uh, sort of bandwidth constrained environments, say over tablets or cell phones, that otherwise may still actually support the open layers JavaScript code. On the other hand, if you're working on a computer and in a web browser that supports that more computationally intensive approach for working with these files that are, lo that are loaded into the browser locally, you actually have um, more options to make use of those data that are now stored in, and accessible in the browser than you would have uh, accessing essentially the images of those data that Google servers provide. Um, but there are pros and cons, there are advantages and, and disadvantages to both solutions. And you need to give that some thought as you're thinking about which one may be best for your application. One of the other major distinguishing characteristics is the integrated support for the Open Geospatial Consor Consortium Services and some of their related products and data formats, where there are um, strategies you can use 
to try to integrate or overlay, say, Open Geospatial Consortium web map services into a Google Maps application. Um, that is not typically um, the, the, a, a clean strategy or a clear strategy that you would like to employ. Um, it is possible, but it's not terribly easy. On the other hand, Open Layers has direct support and understanding of the key Open Geospatial Consortium services so that it can programmatically interact with those remote services in a very straightforward manner, allowing you to connect to services hosted by external providers in a very straightforward manner. So this, this is um, a very powerful model that takes advantage of the existence of these open standards that may be supported by many, many providers, allowing you to integrate data from those providers directly into your map application as, um, in contrast to being limited potentially to a very small number of uh, providers or services that are providing clean integration into the Google Maps platform. Open Layers also has um, general purpose support for a variety of map projections, where um, in Google Maps and the other uh, major web mapping platforms, whether it's Bing or Yahoo or others, you are pretty much limited to what is commonly known as the Web Mercator projection. That is the projection that we've been working with, um, uh, though not, not necessarily identifying it as such, in our Google Maps development activities. Um, if you're working on regional or other applications that might benefit from the use of other map projections, or you're integrating data or data services that are only available in other map projections, Open Layers allows you to do that with the understanding, and this is where the complexity is added to this, um, that you still have um, to have some additional support on the client side for handling some of that reprojection if you're, if you're going to be um, adding data that, that correspond to multiple projections as opposed to merely trying to visualize data that are all in the same projection, but where that projection that is the same across those data sets is something other than Web Mercator. Um, also, this additional support for multiple projections, as you might expect, adds some complexity to the code that you might need to develop for doing uh, si otherwise fairly simple uh, functions like recentering maps or setting their boundaries. Overall, the Open Layers API is an incredibly rich environment with many options for, in terms of data sources that you can tap into, types of representations and capabilities that you can enable within the client interface and tools for allowing uh, for fairly rapid development of and expansion of controls. All of these options in the long run though provide for a more complex environment. One where you have more options and more power but you also have the potential to be dealing with more things that can go wrong or more complex code that you need to write to take advantage of those capabilities. Overall, these are some of the core characteristics that we could think of in terms of distinguishing between the Open Layers platform, which is very much open to a wide variety of data sources and services and providers, and the Google Maps platform that provides a very straightforward and somewhat simplified uh, uh, set of options for being able to um, quickly display data based upon uh, and overlaid upon Google's base maps um, with the um, integration of the services that Google provides as the primary uh, external source feeding into the, um, the, the base mapping capabilities that you have as a part of the interface. 
Neither one of these solution is, solutions is going to be the best in all circumstances. And these are, these are considerations that you need to keep in mind when you're trying to determine which platform may be best for your specific mapping activity. Here I've provided some links to some key resources related to open layers, including the open layers homepage, where you can always go and find the most current information about the status of what version of open layers and with links to um, the various documentation and other resources that are related to uh, the, the current state of open layers as a platform. You're going to want to spend um, a quite a bit of time looking through the Open Layers API documentation as it's as it's linked to from the the lecture notes. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, Open Layers is a very comprehensive and powerful system, and there is extensive documentation that um, that provides information about all of those options. That having been said. Much of the documentation is writ, written writ with an assumption of a moderate to high level of familiarity with the JavaScript programming language. So um, some of the examples and some of the snippets of code that are provided um, may, may be a little difficult to understand at first. But once you gain a better understanding of JavaScript and, it, and how it operates and the structural model for the API, the reference information that's provided as a part of the API documentation is going to be critical to developing um, more complex and sophisticated mapping applications. Finally, um, and perhaps most importantly, there are many, many um, examples or demonstration uh, pages that have been developed for you, you to take a look at as examples of implementing different capabilities based on open layers. So for example, um, here we have uh, an ArcIMS uh, example. Where here we have a connection to an ArcIMS 9.3 REST API where you have essentially an interactive map that is retrieving the map data from an ArcGIS server um, that is hosted outside of, of the, um, the, the server platform that is, that is hosting the example. And remember, in all cases, we can view the page source to look at the actual code that was developed to enable this particular capability. I strongly encourage you to take a look through these examples and get some ideas about all of the possibilities that you can take advantage of using the Open Layers API. Finally, um, I'd like to very quickly walk through a basic mapper that if I follow the link here, you can see in the browser. And in this case, it's a very simple uh, mapper that is using the uh, OpenStreetMap base map. You can see that we have the ability to zoom in and out based on both uh, essentially scrolling with the mouse and also uh, using the controls in the upper left hand corner to zoom around, and then you can pan by just dragging the map. If we go back and look at the code, you'll see some uh, significant uh, similarities between the code that is uh, the foundation for that particular um, map and the code that you are developing for your Google Maps um, activity. In particular, we are here importing the open layers API JavaScript 
as a JavaScript file, just like we were doing with the Google Maps API. This is essentially loading the open layers JavaScript code into our system so that we can then take advantage of it in creating our maps. In lines six through 10, we're setting a number of variables or creating some variables that we will then use in our initialization function that here is, is provided in lines 13 through 26, where again, just like in Google Maps, we're creating a new, an initial map object. We're then creating a layer on lines 17, uh, in, on line 17, and then adding that layer to a to our map on line 18, and then we're changing the characteristics of the map to reset it at the, at the center that is based on a longitude and latitude value that we created earlier. And in this case, we see an example of one of the projection transformation functions that is available in open layers, uh, specifically in lines 21 through 23, where we're basically converting a simple WGS84 longitude and latitude value into the uh, map projection that is used for OpenStreetMap. And uh, to be able to do that, um, we need to, number one, know the coordinate reference system for the longitude and latitude that we've assigned to those variables, but then we need to be able to retrieve the projection information for the map object that has been created. In this case, um, an open layers map. Finally, we can see that we have um, defined a simple map div on line 38 that just like in our Google Maps experience is the location where open layers is going to actually place the map, the map image and all of the controls unless we specify that they're supposed to go someplace else. We also have a very simple style defined here that simply defines the width and height of our, of our map itself um, as you've done with the other map examples. We will go through this in much more detail in, in the demonstrations uh, this week, but I wanted you to see this sample code as an illustration of the similarities between the basic map construction in open layers and the map construction process that you have already become familiar with through your work with Google Maps. Here we have links to the other demonstration um, and example maps that we will be covering in lab later this week. And I encourage you to take a look at them ahead of time and um, look at the source code for them and start to familiarize yourself with the capabilities in conjunction with the readings for this week um, in, the, in the class Open Layers uh, book. So that concludes our um, overview for this week. Um, and then we will then next week move on to um, some more advanced capabilities of open layers, including the creation of custom features and the integration of OGC WMS layers in your mapping clients.